Good evening. We bring you the latest in the world of sports. I'm Paolo Del Rosario. We give you the conversations you want to hear from your favorite icons and athletes. I'm Sam Corrales. And tonight, we catch up with 2023 SEA Games medalist Jasmine Alcaldi. But first, we'll break down the NBA Conference Finals. Buckle up, sports fans. Let's get in the game. Well, 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 bring out the brooms because the sweep has been secured. And the Denver Nuggets are four wins away from their first ever NBA title in franchise history. Now, joining us tonight to break down the end of the Western Conference Finals is NBA Philippines All-Star Analyst, Laker diehard, Coach Willie Wilson. Coach, how are you? I mean, tough, tough series. No, I'm great. I'm great. <laughs> I'm great, except I'm, I'm extremely sad, but I'm great. <laughs> okay, sure. But coach, uh, first things first, we have to give our props to the Denver Nuggets, who Definitely. played such an incredible series. Definitely. Uh, the Lakers, uh, to their credit, were in most of the games, if not all of the games. You gave us two takeaways here, and the first one's the most obvious. Nikola Jokic, practically unstoppable, two-time MVP, might, sh might have, should have been three-time MVP for some people. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts on what he's shown us here in the series. All right, I'm going to reference the great Eric Mink. Mm. And he told me this a, um, a while back that the team with the best player on the floor usually wins the series. And you got to give it to the Nuggets. They have the best player on the floor in Nikola Jokic. And it showed with that sweep. They brought the broom out, man. Mm -hmm. You got to you got to hand them their flowers. Mm -hmm. And coach, with that sweep, how exactly has, been, has he been such a dominant force on the court again, like what Pau said, should he be like should he the been? MVP? Ah, uh, you know what? I still believe that Joel Embiid yep. won okay. it fair and squared, just based off of um, stats alone. Okay, and and, and mm -hmm. their, their record speaks for itself. Remember, Jokic the last two the last oh, last year, he pretty much put the team on his back. This year, he gets two very very good players back in Michael Porter Jr. and. Jamal Murray, who we're going to be talking about in a little bit. You know, uh, speaking of Jamal Murray, you mentioned him a while ago, and you mentioned reference the health issues. Sometimes you got to be healthy, you got to be lucky right. with regards to that. And a lot of people are now wondering if, uh, with the current setup of the Nuggets, with their current health status, let's say they are going to go up against the Miami Heat in the finals. Do you feel that they are title favorites at this point in time? Well, again, I go back to um, that. Who is the best player on the floor? <laughs> Does Miami have anybody on that level of a Nikola Jokic? Arguably, you could say Jimmy Butler because he's a different beast in the playoffs. But recency bias is going to tell us that it's Nikola Jokic. Mm. And coming off an injury, how, what can you say about his performance? I mean, how important is it for him to be playing at this level again, just like probably in the bubble or even better, Coach? Yeah, so I, I, Murray, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I love how you referenced the bubble and you remember that epic series they had with the Utah Jazz. I know you remember that, how <laughs> yeah. he battled back and forth with a player that I won't say his name because he is no longer on that team. Yeah, you can still say it. Uh, no, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll let you say All it, right. That's a, just, just for my safety. <laughs> but, you know, that Jamal Murray was unstoppable. He put on a show. He was virtually unguardable. You know, show, shades back to his high school days and, and, his, and his one season at Kentucky. But that Jamal Murray is back with an even better Nikola Jokic. That one-two punch just prove too unstoppable for the LA Lakers. You know, the funny thing about Jamal Murray is that there were rumors, or at least rumblings, that he was going to be traded because of that injury that he took a while to recover mm -hmm. from. And obviously, Denver sticking to their guns, making sure that, you know, they gave all the trust to Jamal Murray. You take a look at the one-two of Murray and Jokic together. Mm -hmm. Are they the most dangerous duo in the NBA today? Well, I think they're the most dangerous duo left in this playoffs mm. in the NBA well, there are only three teams left yeah and so you know what I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it to them because yeah. you can't really talk about any of the other teams right now in the, in the NBA because they're no longer playing but you got dynamic duos yeah players that complement each other very well but it's not just Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic that one-two punch they put guys around them that just complement them so well KCP 
Yeah. So instrumental. I'm still so upset that he is, you know, he wins a chip with the Lakers, with my Lakers, and then now he sweeps my Lakers while he's on the Nuggets. It, it's, it's bittersweet. You know, you take a look at what the Nuggets have done and what the Lakers haven't done. So you, let's, let's give a moment here to all the Lakers fans out there. Derek, um, all of the crew <laughs> and prod here in the, in the room, uh, Ken, who's watching as well. Uh, the, the Lakers getting swept in the way that they did, obviously very disappointing here. But then just how much more impressive was it for the Nuggets to do what they did, considering that a lot of people had so much hope for the Lakers this year, especially with the way that they started the postseason. All right, there's two ways to look at it. You, you look at it like, okay, they swept a LeBron-led team. Yeah. But again, this is a 38-year-old LeBron-led team. That, that, that's the one way to look at it. Number, number two, you can look at it like, like all right, the, the Lakers were the seventh seed. Yeah. Okay, they had no business being where they were here in the conference finals. So that kind of diminishes the accomplishment that the Denver, the Denver Nuggets made. I know I'm throwing a little bit of shade on the Nuggets, but I mean, it's you got to really look at it yeah. that way, you know, objectively. That seven seed, overachieving team, a 38-year-old LeBron. Mm. Should they run it back? The Lakers? Yeah. That's a huge question right yeah. there. All right, LeBron with his post-game comments about am I going to come back? Am I retiring? I, I think it's just, you know, all, you know, mi misdirection. But definitely run it back. Bring in Kyrie. Maybe get rid of somebody that was absent in the series. D'Lo, I mean, who we're not going to talk about. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, hey, run it back. But when you said bring back Kyrie, our director who's backstage audibly said, oh, so hey. let's see if it happens. Let's see if it happens. But then, of course, uh, we're not done with that yet. Uh, yeah, because <laughs> we all weren't ready. Yeah, but we have to talk about the other matchups as well, the potential matchups here for the Denver Nuggets. Of course. Now, you know, the Nuggets are there just chilling after mm. the sweep against, you know, Lakers, your team, and LeBron. <laughs> Who do you think, coach, is a tougher matchup for them? Will it be the Heat or the Celtics? Yeah, because well, the Celtics technically have yeah, a chance. Yeah. I mean, on paper, you want to say. You want to say the Celtics. You know, they have more bigs that they can throw at Jokic. But with the way that they're playing right now, I just, you know, don't see it. Again, I go back to on paper. Marcus Smart guarding Jamal Murray. Yeah. Robert Williams, Al Horford, you throw these guys at, at, at Jokic. And then they got that one-two punch in Tatum and Jalen Brown. But the way the Miami Heat are playing right now, they just, they're just so cohesive. So I'm going to have to lean towards... The Miami Heat. And if I can take any consolation in what happened to the Lakers, it's that the Boston Celtics are on the verge of also <laughs> getting swept. If I can take any consolation. Yeah, yeah. So the Lakers fans are going to be happy about that, obviously. But then you take a look at the regular season matchup between the Heat and the Nuggets. The Heat actually lost those two games um, against the Nuggets. 0-2 uh, uh, against Denver. But then is it fair to reflect on what they did in the regular season considering... Mm -hmm. Just how much has changed for Miami in the postseason? Again, I, like I like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. We talked about this off offset. I'm throwing out whatever happened in the regular season. Jimmy Butler is a different beast. That's why they call him Playoff Jimmy. Eric Spolstra, Coach Spo, he just has a different way of switching it up. Maybe it was by design. Yeah. That they played that way in the regular season, and they just totally hit you with the 180 and give you something totally different in these playoffs, and it's showing with how they're playing, how cohesive. Look at Duncan Robinson. Yep. Where did he come from? And now he's just balling out. And there's just so many great pieces for Miami. It's going to be an epic matchup should the Miami Heat sweep the Celtics. But coach, we're not done with you yet. We're going to see you later on, but we got a lot more business to take care of here. That's right, pal. So coach, stay right there. We've got more hoops later, but after the break. We'll find out how two-time Olympian Jasmine Alcaldi kept her winning ways in the SEA Games. Stay tuned, you're watching The Game.
Welcome back. You're still watching the game. She may not be a new face in the country's national swimming team, but this two-time Olympian has proven that she still got what it takes to be in the SEA Games podium. And fresh from Cambodia, we now have with us Jazz Alcaldi. Jazz, welcome to the game. Hi everyone, thanks for having me. Hey girl, it's so nice to see you here and congratulations. You know, before we talk about, you know, all of the medals that you've got once again, I mean, let's just talk about your whole journey getting into your seventh SEA Games. Tama ba girl? It's like your seventh already. Eighth actually. Eighth! Oh my Ow. goodness. I really had to count. That is so amazing. So can you tell us about, you know, what made you decide to go for it one last time? Or maybe, you know, for your eighth time, Jazz? I really don't know what kept me going. Because I feel like there's always, as an athlete, there's always that thought in your head, na parang, should I still keep going? Should I stop? Have I reached my full potential? And I think for me is, I still love doing what I do. I still enjoy swimming and I'm still parang kaya pa eh. so I really want to take it to the level where sabi ko, I've given it my all so I think that's why I'm still doing it even for the eighth time you know eight times and uh, you had seven medals this time around here in 2023 in Cambodia mm -hmm. you take a look at the motivation that you need to be able to prepare the way you do because you need to be motivated to stay disciplined you need to be motivated to be physically ready for every type of competition that you're going to end up doing. What was that motivation for you? I think for me, what I, I was what I was telling myself when was one more. So actually my goal was just to get one medal because of my age. Um, it's not typical enough for swimmers to be, I don't want to say old, you know, but to be this experienced, I guess. And Coming from COVID last year, Sea Games last year, I, I got two medals. It's sobrang pilit na pilit na talaga yon. And I really wanted, if I was gonna do it, I wanted to do well for myself and for my country. And parang isa pa, that phrase na isa pa. So after I won my first medal at this competition, I had a lot of events and they added two more while we I was in Cambodia. And parang sa akin is, I already achieved my goal of getting one medal. I'm just gonna enjoy this. Because, you know, like, if for years now, I have been taking each competition as if it was my last. Because, I don't know, like, I don't know when I'm gonna retire, but it's coming up soon. So every competition I, I get a chance to be a part of, I really take it as, it as if it was my last. So after winning my first medal in Cambodia, I really just had fun. I really enjoyed being with the team. And to my surprise, I guess I kept winning. So the number two to six oh, to seven medal was really just a miracle, truly, because I was honestly just hoping for one. Tao mo simple yabang. But uh. Tao, that's but what that's... you get when you're such an experienced athlete, Grabe. You come in just wanting one, but you get, you know, Seven. Like seven. Okay. <laughs> no, but uh, Jazz, seriously speaking though, after you won that first one, that monkey was off your back. Did it give you, I guess, a bit more confidence, a bit more comfort going into those other events? Because your goal was one. You ended up with seven. How did that play in your mind? I think it, it was exactly that. Because last year in Vietnam, my individual medal was on the last day mm -hmm. and it was the very last event. So the stress and pressure that I was feeling I felt was ibang ibang level. So to be able to do this one at the start palang and at my favorite event, na I actually stopped swimming last year. I didn't swim it last year because I felt na I wasn't ready. Yeah. Um, it's my pet event, the event na I lost the gold medal ten years ago, and I just thought I'm done with it. So to do it ten years later, exactly. And to come home with the silver, it was a huge weight off my back. And even if I lost for only 0.20, mm -hmm. which I have nightmares about, <laughs> but it's okay. Um, I'm still very happy with that result, considering I stopped training for it last year. I started doing it again this year. It was my, since 2019, swimming it at the SEA Games, that was the third time I raced that event. 
So I have to parang also be a bit kinder to myself. Yes, I wanted to win that gold medal, but when I got the silver, I was like, okay, like parang I felt like my job is done. Now it's time to really just see what I could do further and really just push the limits. So I just swam everything and really just gave it my all. Jazz, it seems like you're always up for a challenge, stepping out of your comfort zone, you know, joining different events. So can you tell us, Jazz, at this point of your career, how do you stay in shape physically and mentally, um, not knowing what events you'll be joining once the competition um, draws near? How do you do it? I think as an athlete, we're taught or we're basically programmed to always be ready. So it's something that I have in me naturally. So even if I'm not swimming, I'm doing other things like working out in the gym or you know, like yoga stretches, just to really keep me in shape. So, but you know, malapit na competition, it's not like I'm out of shape. I could go back in, train really hard, and be ready for an event. So, I think it's more like the discipline. And since I've been doing this for a really long time, it's a bit easy for me to get into that mindset of being a disciplined athlete. But mm -hmm. training lang naman and like doing it often, I feel like that's that's the key to be motivated. Well, Jazz, uh, a while ago, we talked a bit about how, well, at least off-air, we talked a bit about your qualifications for the Asian Games and for the uh, and, may, and potentially the Olympics moving forward. But then, since we're not quite sure about the processes with, with regards to that first, I want to ask you something a bit different here. And that is concerning the fact that you are a seasoned athlete already uh, in terms of uh, your age in the sport. And yet, here mm -hmm. you are seeing a lot of younger generation uh, athletes come in and do your events, who want to learn from you, who have never been to the Olympics before, who want to do what you've done. How have you taken up, have you taken up rather a mentorship role in the team and trying to really make sure that you leave the team in a better place moving forward? I feel like, I don't want to be <laughs> mayabang, but I feel like for a few years, that's what I've been trying to do because I always ask myself this question um, when I was younger, what what did I need when I was younger? So I was 15 years old when I was part of the, well, 15 when I did my first SEA Games. Mm -hmm. And what did I need at that time? So parang the active figure or someone to really look up to. I don't try to be overly like that. Yeah. Um, I'm still very young at heart. So even though they're like, some of them, my teammates are 10 years younger than me. I don't feel that parang difference in age because I think sometimes. But in my actions and in how I portray myself or step up to the plate, I hope, I hope, that's all I could do right now. I hope that it does inspire them and teach them a lesson or two. So hopefully they could continue and actually become better athletes for the Philippines. That's all I wanted is to leave the sport better than when I started. Jazz, this is already, you know, your eighth SEA Games, the one in Cambodia. What advice would you give the next generation of swimmers or just any Filipino athletes who's looking to follow in your footsteps as well, Jazz? I think showing I have proved that Filipinos can definitely do it, um, no matter where you come from, what age, you know, from 15 to 29. I've been winning medals for the Philippines, so it's never too early or and it's never too late. As long as you have the right heart, you train hard, and you really love what you want, I think anything is possible. So yeah, good luck if you want to try. And I, I know, nah, if I can do it, you can too. Well, Jazz, you know, you mentioned that 29 is old for a swimmer, but really, you are very <laughs> young. Please stop saying that. <laughs> stop saying that in general. But Jazz, uh, we really appreciate you coming on the show and uh, sharing a bit of your journey with us. And we can't wait to see what's next for you. You're amazing, Jazz. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you, guys. Thank well, you. That's, that was Jasmine Alcaldi, a seven-time uh, medalist in the 32nd Southeast Asian Games. So, after the break. We'll celebrate one of the NBA greats as he announces his retirement. Stay tuned. You're watching The Game.
to the game. On the day the Denver Nuggets clinch a spot in the 2023 NBA Finals, sorry Laker fans, a Nuggets legend and draftee announced his retirement after spending 19 years in the league. Carmelo Anthony posted a final goodbye to the NBA on the social media pages and with us to celebrate his 19-year journey as NBA Philippines All-Star Analyst Coach Willie Wilson. Coach, a lot of people, I remember I saw something viral online uh, fairly recently. A lot of people were saying, if you go up to a kid right now and ask them, who is Melo in the NBA? <laughs> Some people might say, LaMelo Ball, yes, yes. but Carmelo Anthony. But I think yes. it's safe to say for our generation, yes. at least, there's only one Melo, and Carmelo Anthony is that guy. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the, the generation today, the, the YouTube generation, I mean, even AAU Ball, gen, the generation of that, they won't really fully grasp the, the, the impact that Carmelo Anthony had on, on the NBA and just basketball in a whole because, he, I mean, again, he came out in that draft class with LeBron, D. Wade, Chris Bosh. That, that was, that was um, a generationally great draft class. I put them up there with the 96, 96. draft class of, of Kobe and the 84 draft class of, of Jordan. And Carmelo stood up with each and every one of those guys in his draft class. And given that coach, you know, he's had so many accomplishments, even one of the all-time best scorers from the mid-range. But he's never won a championship. He has never won an MVP award. Do you think Melo deserves a spot in the Hall of Fame? I definitely do. I mean, you, you talked about him being an all-time great scorer. Ninth all-time. There mm. are only eight other players in the many, many players that have came and went through the NBA, and there's only eight better scorers than him. That alone, should, I feel, should you know, qualify him for a spot in the NBA Hall of Fame. Well, that and the fact that he's a three-time Olympic gold medalist. That as and well. the international basketball counts when it comes to that. But you take a look at the fact that, all right, to so be mentioned a while ago, the younger generation won't understand his impact. If you were to explain it to someone of Sam's age, uh, what, what Carmelo Anthony has done uh, for basketball, in basketball, especially during his prime time alongside prime LeBron, okay. prime D. Wade. How would you characterize a Carmelo Anthony? All right, let's just go back to his college days. Freshman, National Player of the Year, coming out of Syracuse, wins a national championship. At that time, that was unheard of. Obviously, we saw Anthony Davis do it with Kentucky. But at that time where you had universities in America with multiple seniors playing. Those guys are just have four years of, of, of college weight room on them. And he goes there, wins a national championship, gets national player of the year, ends up going to the NBA. He actually brings Denver to the playoffs as a rookie. Yeah. LeBron couldn't bring Cleveland to the playoffs as a rookie. So just, I mean, that fact alone right there just shows that he put Denver on his back. Denver became relevant as a franchise because of Carmelo. Yeah. And coach, you know, we're in the age of social media as pal. I uh, would like to say like in my generation at least and <laughs> everything else. But you see the retirement video of Melo and there's this interesting line yeah. that he said. He's like, I, when I leave a legacy, I don't want it to be about, you know, the points or mm -hmm. everything that I did. I want to pass it on to my son, Kai. I love How does that. that make you feel? Well, me being a father of three, I have, I have two girls and a boy. And, and I always talk about legacy and, and leaving my legacy through people. You know, the people that, that, that I have an impact on. And, and I love that how he said, you know, it's not about me. It's about my son, and, and, and I'm, giving, I'm giving him the keys. The ball is in his hands, and, and go and chase your dreams. I love, I love that line. I love how he just said, you know what? I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm putting it in your hands, son. Well, Carmelo Anthony retires after a 19-year journey, and what a journey it was, especially for a generation already passed. And uh, for those young ones there who think Melo is still a Melo ball, I suggest you check out YouTube and see what he's done throughout his entire career. Coach Willie Wilson, really appreciate your time and to talk about the Lakers and Denver a while ago. Thank really you so appreciate much. Thanks, Coach. Thank You're a real so one. Thank you for joining us. I'm Sam Corrales. And I'm Paolo Del Rosario. This has been The Game.